Strap in, gang, hold on to your butts because Games Workshop has gone absolutely wild and they are removing an absolute ton of models from Age of Sigmar. This is big, like this is a vast number of miniatures that are soon to be not a thing, with the exception of the Beast of Chaos. To be fair, they are simply being moved to a different game system. What is happening? So, before we get into things, this video is sponsored by Warmag, we'll hear more from them in a little bit. But for now, I have some I have some bad news for you. If you are a Stormcast Eternals player who has largely based your army around the Sacrosanct Chamber, a lot of your stuff is gone. A lot of your stuff is gone. Like, fully gone. And what blows my mind with this, right, is that the Stormcast Eternals stuff, comparatively, isn't even that old. And they are removing models that aren't even like six years old yet. But they're still selling the elves and dwarves attached to the Cities of Sigmar range, having done a whole update for that range focused entirely on humans. The article is appropriately titled, What's Leaving the Warhammer Age of Sigmar range? And good lord, how long have you got? <laughs> um, wow. Every Citadel miniature is a unique piece in the ever-evolving narrative of Warhammer. Unfortunately, we can't continue to sell and support every model we've ever made indefinitely. I mean, that is true. To be fair to them, there have been many complaints about bloat over the years. I, I do it, constantly. I mean, Space Marines, hilariously bloated. It was insane. However, a lot of the stuff that they've removed in the past has been stuff that's been around for quite a long time. Or it's been something like, with the whole shift of Forge World stuff over to Legends and things, that's trimming down where things are still available and technically still able to be used. And with the Space Marine range especially, we're talking things that have been around for a long, long time that have been slowly supplanted by Primaris versions over the last, well, however many years. I can't remember how long ago Primaris first came out because... Time is impossible to measure with any device. Don't talk to me about clocks and watches. I'm not interested. The thing is, though, that with this specific statement, some of these models are so not old enough to just be scrapped already. Like, when they're selling stuff that is literally 20 years old, how are they getting rid of things that are, like, six years old before that? What is happening? They do go on to say, as we make new models and new books to explore their background and rules, we have to stop producing and featuring some older models. Which is true, that is the case, but I tell you what, it'd be even nicer if people could buy the new models that you make. That'd be good. Wouldn't that be nice? A little bit of snide cheekiness there, but let's carry on. Just like many of you, we still treasure our collections of older miniatures, and we still want to be able to use them in games and forge glorious tales of errors and adventure on the tabletop. There should be an asterisk there, right? There should be an asterisk that just says, we do want to be able to do this, but by about a year's time, we won't be able to, and neither will you. That's really what that should say, but they haven't put that in there, for understandable reasons. Before we get properly into this mess, let's hear a little bit about Warmag from me earlier. This video is sponsored by Warmag, a magnetic transportation system for your Warhammer army. It's simple. You take your sheet of delightful rings, you place them within the bases of your miniatures so that they can sit flat just like that. Then you take a really useful box and you put one of their base sheets inside, leave it for 24 hours to cure, and then you too can just, you know, wave your models around. There are loads of different base sheet options to choose from and there's going to be a bunch more going on the store very soon. Things that look like this, or this, or that, or this. Look, you are absolutely spoiled for choice, whether you want grass, rocks, a nice tiled bit of scenery, or some lovely space stuff. I recommend the pink one, but that's only because, well, I mean, you've seen the channel, you know. Additionally, Warmag will soon be stocking a 9 litre really useful box with a tray on top, which adds about another 4 litres or so. It does mean that this is slightly shorter than it would otherwise be, but it does mean you have two levels in this box. Now, it's important to note that the base sheets for the tray are plain for the time being. If you want to check Warmag out in person, you can find them at Salute this year, and you should also follow the Instagram, where you'll get plenty of news and updates, not just from the event itself, but for everything they do. Thank you to Warmag for sponsoring this video let's crack on are you ready for the big long are you ready for the scroll of doom as we move down this page and see all the things that have been lost or moved let's do it let's have a bit of fun this isn't all that fun to be honest because i know quite a few people who are going to be very very badly affected by this as entire two to three thousand in one case four and a half thousand points i think the beast of chaos army is they are not going to be having a good day 
So as you can see, we've got some sacrosanct stuff up there. Then we have oh so many beast men, and then we have the bone splitters. They are still kind of supporting them for a bit. So beast of chaos and bone splitters, as well as a number of older Stormcast Eternals, will be receiving free to download digital battle tomes. So you do still have some rules to go along with. You do still have the ability to play with them for a bit. But there is a catch to that, because as they say here, they will be considered for legal use and competitive play until summer 2025. At this point, they will move over to Warhammer Legends and will no longer be supported for competitive play. Now, of course, that won't affect quite a few of you. For quite a few people, the idea of not being able to use them in competitive play is a whatever, because they don't play competitive. But it does also mean, once they've moved into Legends, that they're not going to get continued support and they're not going to receive continued development, which is part of just being shunted into the side there. It is effectively a, yeah, you can keep using these, yes, they do have rules, no, we will never address any sort of balance with them, we will never change points or how anything works, they're just there now. Have fun, I guess. It's better than it used to be. I have to admit, I still think that Legends is better than what they used to do, which was effectively go, your army's gone. Tough shit, deal with it. And that would be the whole thing. That's not great. Maybe not whole armies, although in the case of, I mean, it's cool being squatted for a reason, right? But, you know, having units just removed and it just being a case of, yeah, whatever, that's not good. Legends is better than what we had before. And they do, of course, encourage us to continue using collections for casual play. I'm saying us, because I do have quite a few Sacrosanct Stormcast things lying around, which I, I kind of was planning to use a little bit, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to be a thing for that much longer. But I'll tell you one thing, something that does kind of sap the enthusiasm out of a project is knowing that the rules are going to be, like, set and forget, never looked at again until, like, the next edition or whatever. That kind of put the dampers on a little bit, even though I'm not too fussed about how good something is and I just like creating fun thematic armies. It just chips away the enthusiasm just a little bit, you know, just a tiny bit. One of the great tragedies of this, though, is that quite a few of the Warcry and Underworlds warbands are just going. They will go off sale and enter Legends. Gone. Just gone. That sucks. I mean, the Warcry stuff especially, half of that stuff isn't even that old. There's stuff in there that has not been out for really any time at all, comparatively. When you look at the grand scheme of Games Workshop's, like, lifespan, if you want to put it that way, and how long they have left stuff up for sale before, Warcry stuff and Underworld stuff just being gone, full stop, crazy to me. Absolutely, <laughs> I mean, good grief. There's so many good sculpts that they're just getting rid of. I want to see sales data. I want to see sales, right? I want to see that. I want... They're not going to give me that. They're not going to give that to anybody. No one's going to receive individual item sale data from Games Workshop, especially not me. But God, I'd love to just see what is doing well, what isn't, whether that has any correlation to what is being lost here, etc., etc. God, I'd love to see that. There's no way. It's never going to happen. But one can dream. Anyway, so for Stormcast Eternals, I mean, they do say they have one of the largest miniature ranges in Warhammer history. Yes, because they did the Space Marine thing, where they decided to make a poster boy for the setting, then decided that the best way to get people to buy into said poster boy is to produce a metric shed load of models endlessly, and funnily enough, that tends to lead to bloat, which is exactly what happened with Space Marines in the first place, which is one of the biggest issues that that faction has had historically, and something that has got the most negative attention from fans of the franchise and the miniatures, and yet they still did it again. Why? Stop it. So, here we go. What have we got? <sighs> so many. It's so much stuff. Although, to be fair, look how many goddamn characters. Look how many characters there are just in these two rows alone. <sighs> no one needs that. No one needs it. No one needs that. Like, choice is good, all right? I love choice. I love having lots of different things to choose from. That's great. That's fine. There is also such a thing as just... Too many characters. That's also a thing that can happen. That's totally what's happened here. Look at this mess. Jesus. So the blister going... I'm actually quite sorry about that. I really like that sculpt. It's weird, and they really couldn't decide whether to make those, like, fantasy or sci-fi. They had no idea at the time. But it has charm. I like that. The evocators are not old. Like, on Dracolines? The evocators on Dracolines are so young <laughs> compared to... So many of the things they're still selling in the Age of Sigmar range that those being removed blows my mind. 
The Evocators, uh, I'm not too worried about them. I've never been a big fan of those. The Secretors, however, absolutely solid. Shame they're going. The Evocators and the Secretors, I can't remember if they were shown in the trailer for 4th edition or not, but it wouldn't surprise me if they just got replacement models. Although, then again, frankly, the Liberators aren't that different to the Secretors, in a way. Like, uh, I don't know. Be interesting to see. All of these characters, honestly, I'm not too fussed about this lot getting shuffled off. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight characters right there. That's too many. That is too many. You don't need that many. The Judicators and Castigators, I'm assuming we'll see some sort of ranged update. I think there is already some Thunderstrike range stuff going on, but I just can't remember what they're called. I think there is. I might be I might be incorrect. Liberators we know are getting updated. Like a few of these are going to receive Thunderstrike equivalents or Thunderstrike upgrades, but it's all kind of crazy to see so much of this going. Like Oh god, it's so many models. It's so many models, so many squads, so many kits. That is so much stuff that people who have been collecting Stormcast since the start are just losing. Like, they're just gone. I mean, yeah, okay, oh, they got a digital battle time until 2025, fine. But then it's Legends, and then and then that's it. They're, they are finished, they're away. That You can only do casual play, and they're not going to get proper support. And it feels, it feels like particularly bad when it comes to the Stormcast because they've not been around that long. <laughs> they've not been around that long and they've already had a second like mark of armor. They've already had like the Primaris treatment. They had that relatively quickly over the like grand scheme of the life of that particular range. There are people who didn't buy into that. There are people who kind of expected the Stormcast Sacrosanct stuff to be supported for longer, and I don't blame them for expecting it to be supported for longer. Because, as I've said a couple of times already in this video, there are kits that Games Workshop are selling right now that are twice as old as the oldest Stormcast kit. And yet, these are going, some of those aren't. It's kind of baffling, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of baffling this one. Skaven, of course, are getting a big update. They're getting a big refresh, so I'm not surprised to see a lot of their stuff go. I mean, come on. Half the stuff on this list is ancient. Like, ancient. Old as hell. Some of these, they didn't even ever update the picture from square base to round, for God's sake. I mean, like, this is a faction that's going to get a significant refresh. We already know that there's a lot coming in. But at the same time, they're also ditching things like the Arch Warlock, which isn't an old kit. It's not that old. And you know what blows my mind more than anything else with this list? When you look through this, do you notice anything missing? Do you notice anything missing? Clan Rats, Acolyte, we've got the Warp Fire Throw, the Rattling Gun, the Gutter Runners, again, very old. Rat Swarms, Master Mole, the Arch Warlock, not that old a kit. Warp Grinder, we've got quite a few things here. We've also got Plague Priest and Plague Sensor Bearers. Can you see anywhere on that list Plague Monks? Did you spot Plague Monks in the list of stuff they're getting rid of for Skaven? Did you spot that? No, that's because they're not on the list. That's because Plague Monks are still for sale and will continue to be and apparently are still being supported. On that note, it does say any unit that doesn't receive an updated War Scroll when Battle Time Skaven drops will receive a Legends War Scroll, so maybe that's where the Plague Monks are going to show up. Something that I find absolutely fascinating about this section, Bone Splitters, from the Armoured Bulk of the Iron Jaws to the Lanky Cunning of the Cruel Boys, the Auric War Clans are as diverse as they are vicious. Well, they're not going to be that diverse now, because you will either have the Armoured Bulk of the Iron Jaws or the Cruel Boys. That's two types. That's it. That's not all that diverse, because you're removing the Bone Splitters. So, yeah, an interesting way to lead into that thing. Yeah, there's much... Oh, there's choice. There's choice abound for the... Well, not these. Not these. Those are gone. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know whether this is something where they're going to show up in the Old World at some point. Although, Orcs will. In fact, we've already seen some Orc stuff, and I don't remember seeing any Bone Splitters in there. So, I think these are just gone. I think they're just gone. Then again, they have had almost no support for the entire life of Age of Sigmar, pretty much. So, I mean, it sucks to see him go, but it's also not massively surprising. It's the only thing in this list that isn't surprising, frankly. <laughs> like, I think the Bone Splitters is the one thing where I saw it and went, yeah, that makes sense. All the Stormcast stuff, not so much. All of this, the Slaves to Darkness... Oh, so many good kits. So 
many good kits. A number of warbands representing the wider worshippers of chaos. By the way, it was a fantastic idea. It's great. This sucks in the mortal realms. We'll be retiring from the spotlight and the range. I really wanted to start a Cities of Sigmar guns only army because now you can do that with the new AOS rules. You could just do that and that'd be hilarious. Uh, it'd be terrible. It wouldn't win anything, but it would be really fun. I actually don't want to do that now. I want to try and hunt down the Tarantulas brood, the Cypher Lords, and I could really... Uh, I want another I want another box of the Unmade as well. That I mean, that project has just gone out the window because I want to make sure I get at least... at least the Tarantulas brood and the Cypher Lords before they go because they are class. And them getting rid of them when they haven't been around for that long... Incredible decision. What the hell? There's a lot of stuff to just go. Oh, it's gutting. Now, this is the one that, outside of the Stormcast, I feel is going to cause the most consternation and upset, because the Beasts of Chaos are leaving AOS, but they'll be back in the past as part of the Old World. Now, on the one hand, this means that the Beastmen aren't just, like, vanishing, the kits are disappearing, we're not going to see them anymore. That would suck. There is so much on the chopping block, losing Beasts of Chaos would be... It would just be the awful rotten cherry on the out-of-date stale cake, right? I've already seen people upset about this, and I totally get it. Like, I totally get it. Is there a way to say this that's like... Uh, some of the stuff on this list is so old and so dated that it frankly belongs in the old world. <laughs> like... If you want, if you want some of that classic Games Workshop Warhammer Fantasy jank, then there are quite a few things in the Beasts of Chaos range that absolutely fit the bill. And given that the old world is Games Workshop's exercise in selling the old stuff that they never updated and banking off nostalgia, I mean, let's be honest, with the Doom Bull, the Jabber Slide, the Shagoth, the Ogres, man. You've got a lot there that is old as hell and really does belong in the past. So I guess in a way, it does sort of make sense. It's not only that, however, we're also losing a few choice things from other ranges. The Branch Wraith, the Eternity Warden, Valkyrie the Bloody, which is a real shame, I love that model. Sila and for whatever. The Madcap Shaman, I didn't realise they still sold. Or the big boss on Gigantic Spider. I'd totally forgotten that both those miniatures existed. However, losing Mistweaver Sai? Say? Sai? Sai? And her. Her down there. That one. That is a genuine gut wrencher because that is a fantastic model. That is one of the best models that Games Workshop has ever made. And I'm not being hyperbolic. I genuinely love that model like you wouldn't believe and now i'm going to go and see if i can buy one from somewhere because i need that before it disappears look i get it games workshop cannot infinitely produce every miniature they've ever made they also don't have infinite storage capacity as we know from the fact that so much stuff is out of stock all the time that doesn't stop it from sucking when something that you have put your time and effort and creativity and personality into is taken away it sucks when that happens Anyway, this has gone on way too long. This is going to be a pain to edit. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of all of those changes in the comments down below. And if this has had the kind of impact where you just don't really want to go into the next edition of AOS, then let me know. I want to, I wanted, I want to see what the people who have been properly negatively impacted by this think and whether it's altered your perception of what this new edition is going to be. And if you've just had a big collection... Not quite immediately invalidated, but it's now on the chopping block and you know there's going to be a point not that far away where it's not really usable for what you wanted it for. I'm genuinely sorry because it sucks. Like, it genuinely sucks. I still remember the feeling when I was younger, quite a bit younger, sadly, of finding out that, oh, 13th Company Space Wolves don't exist anymore, so that's an army that just isn't really a thing. I never started Space Wolves again. Like, I never did it. I never wanted Space Wolves after I had that army. I wanted my army. And the option to have my army didn't exist until a long time later. By which point, I don't know, I just never went back to it. So, I can, in some small way, 
relate. Kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. <laughs>